Let's bring in Daniel Perry now, former Deputy Attorney General for New York and former Assistant U.S. Attorney for New York Southern District. Daniel, Mark Short going before the federal grand jury. What, what does that signal to you? This is, I don't know if I would go so far as to call it a watershed moment, but it's certainly a turning point. As you pointed out, Mark Short is the first White House insider that we're aware of, at least, that has testified before this grand jury. We have heard news reports and we can see in almost real time that some of the hearing testimony, particularly that of Cassidy Hutchinson and some others, has really jolted the Department of Justice into action. And we have recently seen a flurry of activity, including the seizure of cell phones of certain of the president's advisors. We've seen some, some folks relating to the quote unquote fake electors who have been, been issued subpoenas. But again, this is the highest ranking White House official who we are aware of that has testified before the grand jury. And we're aware as well that he's got some pretty devastating information um, that could be highly relevant to this criminal probe. Yeah, that's the criminal probe. Then there's the January 6th committee. It's been treading very carefully with Jenny Thomas, but now they're considering a subpoena. What factors into their decision making? I think it's probably a sliding scale of how informative her testimony will be up against kind of the optical issues, the PR issues, the fight that they know she'll put up, the distraction it will cause. So uh, they have a much better sense than we do, even after having watched eight of these hearings, of how useful her testimony is. So no doubt they are weighing the, you know, the benefits against the disadvantages and will decide whether or not to seek the, her testimony against what her lawyers already promised will be a fight. Daniel, then there's the, the criminal case in Georgia. The Fulton County District Attorney's Office there has its own spiraling investigation. Governor Brian Kemp reportedly expected to testify today. Some experts say the DA there could be building towards racketeering charges. Do you agree? I think by... From the evidence that we've seen, she is building a fairly broad case. This is not a narrow case of election interference. It, it given the the blizzard of target letters and subpoenas that that grand jury has been issuing, and given that racketeering charges are sort of a signature of DA Willis's, I, I think that she's not. This is not just bravado that she is trying to build a broad enterprise RICO style case against we don't know exactly who but again given the sheer breadth of these letters and subpoenas that have been going out seems like she is is looking to make a robust and far-reaching case and would you expect that criminal case in Georgia to move along faster than the federal one it's really hard to say. I think uh, that the Attorney General Garland has uh, some serious prudential and other, I hate to say political considerations mm. because the Department of Justice is not supposed to concern itself with political considerations, right. but <laughs> he very well may be um, from, from the, I would say the, the slow uh, walk that we've seen here she, on the other hand, uh, does not have some of those same kinds of concerns, but we already know that a lot of the recipients of these subpoenas are going to be putting up a fight. It could be some time before that winds its way through the courts, and a RICO investigation is a serious one. It takes some time to build from the ground up. So it could be a matter of months, uh, could, be, could be longer. It's hard to say, but she doesn't have also the same kind of political timeline considerations around the election that the Department of Justice is, is likely to be considering. Really all very interesting. Daniel Perry, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks.